Hi and welcome back everyone. This is actually going to be the last look for the summer, taking a little mini break away with the family to faraway places, actually Thailand, which is quite exciting. One of my friends moved there after he left school, didn't know what he wanted to do, didn't know what he wanted to do for a job or with himself or anything actually, and he went traveling um, and he stayed. Um, so we're going off there and doing various bits and bobs. And I also just kind of wanted to kind of spend a little time going through all your comments and kind of collating some really good content to come back um, in September for. So I thought the final look should be like an evening summer look. I don't know about you, but I sort of have two looks when I go on holiday. I try and keep the makeup quite simple. Um, in terms of not bringing a whole bag of stuff, because otherwise, as you know, I'm a complete beauty addict that I would just kick it all, oh, I could have that one, I could have that one. But actually, when it comes down to it, you just think, oh, what am I gonna put on for the evening? And normally, for me, it's hair loaded with conditioner in a side part and in a little bun, which will come out later when it dries, um, in the nice, warm, sunny summer air. Um, and a big earring, which I never wear big earrings, but it's become this thing that I just love a big earring on holiday with one of my little frocks for the evening. And I'll have two makeup looks. So I will always take the Sea Firma Day Serum from Drunk Elephant. Um, nice and light packaging and lots and lots of antioxidants on your skin after a day in a lot of sun exposure is the best thing that you can do for your skin. So I always put loads and loads of vitamin C on morning and evening. I don't take any retinol or anything with me. And then I will choose a very light. I'm going to choose my Antipodes one, which I used just recently with you guys. Again, it's sort of loaded with vitamin C. Um, this is the pigment correcting one, the DM. Um, again, this is very, very light. So nice and hydrating. You don't want to be too sweaty, do you, basically? And if you're in a very humid climate, then... Um, you just want a little bit of moisture put back into the skin, but nothing that's too heavy or feels heavy. Um, and then I'll start with my makeup. Always have a lovely orangey red nail varnish to hand. This is the Max Factor Nailfinity in Spotlight on Her. Much loved, as you can see as the packaging has started to fade. It's annoying that, isn't it? Um, so I hope you've enjoyed everything that we have been putting out. I say we because I do it alongside my lovely friend Zoe, who's probably more a beauty addict than me. Um, she's always in the stores, always in the stores, always searching, clicking, buying. Um, and she sorts out all the videos and makes sure that she have all the right links and stuff. Um, and she, oh look, here we are. That's a nice look, isn't it? I've got a bit of nail varnish on the side of my neck. That's the reality, isn't it? I'm being too impatient because I put my nails on thinking, oh, I must make my nails look nice. And obviously I've rushed it. Maybe I'll take that off. One moment. Right, let's just remove nail varnish from said neck because that is not part of the look. Um, I'm glad you all like me wittering on. <laughs> um, it is quite a strange thing, wittering on to yourself alone with a camera. But I do imagine you all there and I imagine you all a bit like... Um, the app the kids have where you see all the Snapchat, where you see all the people around in the different countries. I've now got lots of you in America and in Germany, in Austria and in Australia, New Zealand. So I imagine you all around. So hello everyone. It's really, really lovely to have you um, as part of my group. And when you say things like start by Saturday morning with Caroline, it's so special. So thank you. Right, in terms of base, obviously I do put Factor 50 on so I shouldn't have any redness in my skin at all. Um, so depending again on how hot the room is I'm getting ready in, how I feel, because sometimes I don't wear anything on my skin or sometimes it's just a little bit of concealer, I will take two items. So these are the ones I'm taking with me. I'll take my Monica Blunder because I can use it in many different ways. I can use it just underneath my eyes in this area here. Um, and then I can use it to just knock back any kind of redness, but then I can blend it out so it's quite thin. Now, obviously this color here, because I already know what I'm gonna do, so I planned it out, is a little bit lighter. So actually when I pack my bag, I probably will use a shade that's a little bit darker. This is 2.5 um, and I'm not probably gonna be spending that much time face shaping whilst I'm on holiday. I just want something to carry with me. So I'll probably take the 4.5 um, that I can just place over those areas to knock back the darkness and kind of conceal the redness. But I'll just take that as a bit of a security blanket. Um, but I will just take the sheer tinted oil-free Beauty Pie um, in shade medium. Um, again, this is a really lovely shade, simple and easy to use. And it's just, 
especially if you're wearing a red lip. Can I say that if you are a red lip fan, that's when you probably need a little bit more base um, to neutralize any of the redness that you may have from the, the literally the temperature of wherever you are um, or any kind of redness that you might have got from the sun during the sun. Um, now I'm going to put that on and because I want it to be sheer I'm not going to do what I normally do um, and uh, just push it all in with my fingers. I'm going to buff quite quickly into the skin so I don't want this to be heavy. This isn't going to be a heavy perfected look. It's really just to knock back and even out my skin tone so that when I put on my eye or put on my lip it just looks a little bit more pulled together. So this is a nice firm brush. This is one by Sensei. Nice firm brush, so it buffs all the product in. You can still get the lightness under the eyes. So yeah, so this kind of texture works really well because if you go for something that's matte it, and you are in a hot, humid environment, it can congeal. So you have to keep wafting yourself. So just, you know, just keep it simple. Don't make the texture too heavy. And if you go for something too glossy, you might find that you end up looking too shiny. So it's kind of like getting that balance of that sheerness that evens out your skin tone. Just almost like putting a pair of tights, a pair of sort of tender in your tights over your face. Just gives you that softness, but you don't get the, the, the perfected look. And I know some, you know, lots of young girls love to have that heavy, heavy look. It's not my vibe. We've all got our own different vibe. I prefer something just a little bit simpler like this. So that will be my skin. I've got a lovely new brow pencil to show, quite like the colour. Um, and this, let me just see what the colour is actually, Indian Chocolate. Um, again, it's really, really fine. It's by a company called um, Blink Brow Bar, which is um, a London-born company. I know the founder. And actually, I'm gonna go and have a little chat, I think in September, and kind of run through their brow products and treatments that they do to try and kind of boost these brow babies because, um, they are getting a little bit annoying. Someone did say to me on the comments actually, oh, why do you make your eyebrows so light? Um, well, I sort of match my eyebrows. Why don't you make them as dark as your hair? Which is dark, it seems to be getting darker. Um, and that's because I don't like my eyebrows to look any darker than they should. I kind of match my eyebrow hair, which is lighter than my actual hair. Um, I know lots of people like dark brows. It's a real thing, isn't it? It's like, where does your parting go, left or right? How would you feel comfortable? I think if I were to darken my brows, and maybe I can show you that um, next uh, time we tune in, um, I find that the darker brows tend to, to be a little bit aging on the face and they obscure the eye, but it depends on the balance of your face, right? If your eyes are very, very big, you might need to darken your brows to kind of give them a good frame. So it's all about kind of balancing our faces. And I think this is why Watching people put makeup on is kind of such an addictive thing or relaxing thing because you're just sort of watching people's faces evolve, but we're also different. It's really hard to kind of gauge what will be good for you when you're watching someone else do it. I guess that's why um, I've got lots of followers that probably are, you know, pale skin like me with kind of like light to medium brown hair um, because you sort of try and gravitate to who looks like you to see how you can make your makeup look like them. Maybe, or maybe not. Maybe that's not true at all. So yes, really love this brow pencil, ultra slim brow definer. Um, I liked it very much because this week it's really, really lasted. And again, I really like the thin tips. Lots of these on the market, but um, I quite like this one right now. Okay, so I would either go for two looks. No, I'm jumping the gun. So definitely, by far, I have absolutely loved the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer. Beautiful skin, Sunkless Glow bronzer. Loved it, loved it, loved it. I've loved it at work. I'm, I'm loving it on myself. So I will definitely take this. And actually, I might just kind of use a nice firm brush. Like this one here, Studio 10. Maybe I'll take a double brush with me because it's just easier for packing, isn't it? Um, let me think. I'm probably going to be a medium. Let's see what the medium looks like. Nice, soft brush. Yeah, I'll go for medium. And I just dance that over the super light, not greasy, you don't have to be firm with it. I just love the tones of these bronzers. Love, love, love. So even if I don't use any base, if I feel that my skin's fine or I'm in a rush, then I will just use that and just shade that little part under the chin. Um, and that's enough. And this kind of this kind of tan, warm, caramelly colour will again also neutralise any sort of redness you have into your face. I can knock that back there, but I'll go in with a little bit of bronzer later on. So loving, loving this. So if you're 
at the airport and you want to get something. I went for medium. If you are fair, the fair is lovely too, but I sort of go in between at work. Um, my rose ink, I'm going to go again, an enemy, it's such a lovely blush. Whether I use that or not, I'll see. I'll wait to the end because it might be too much. I'm not going to use the lip look, but the Trish McAvoy Matte Red um, it has been an absolute pleasure to wear and I actually wore it to a festival, music festival the other day. Oh, I went to see Nara Rogers. Chic. What a guy. Um, an outside festival, it was so much fun, just dancing around, it was just great. Anyway, I wore this and I still had it on when I came back and I didn't feel it. Love that, because I get really funny and claustrophobic with too much makeup on my face. So this is going to be the one I'm taking over in the summertime. But with this little frock, I wanted to do a smoky eye. And I love smoky eyes where they are so easy to do and they just look shimmery and glossy. And I think I found um, a really beautiful formula. Got them from Cult Beauty, uh, Natasha Denona. They're called Crystal Top Coats. And I've got one that is, just want to look at the color, nude. So just very soft and sparkly and sheer. Let me just try and get that in focus. Maybe I'm too far away. Really, really lovely, but it looks so glossy. So I would wear that maybe just with my red lip and I'll just put that across the top. But I'm going to go in with this guy. Really lovely molten colour. But I'm, you can use them as top coats. So you can actually use... Well, maybe I should do that. Maybe I'll do a little bit of a... Use it as a double product rather than just go straight in there. The reason I love these kind of products is they just, as I said, make everything easy. And I want makeup to be easy and fun. Not something that you should shy away from. But might be a good idea. Maybe I'll just use the bronzer. Let's use what we've got rather than keeping getting something different. So I'll go with a fair bronzer. You don't even know what I'm talking about, do you? I know where I'm going with this. And you're like, what? Can you just please keep it in sync, Caroline? Sorry. Um, what I'm saying is I was going to use those just as a gloss, but you can, and because they're called top coat, it just gave me another idea. So with my eyes being the shape that they are, I have to do give them a little bit of structure. So I'm gonna go in with a light one, just with a firm brush and I'm gonna push that socket back. So I'm pushing the darkness back, sorry, I'm pushing the lightness of my lid back by adding a little bit of depth because I don't want it to be too light at the top there because that's big gap here between my brow and my socket is too pale. So just adding a little bit of depth there with a smaller brush automatically shapes my eye. I think you guys can see that too. Push that in. Just really soft, blends in. And let me do it underneath as well, just to get a really lovely, soft, smoky eye. And again, these products will work on a damp skin. Uh, they blend really well, whereas if it was a dry, fine powder, you might get a little bit of smudginess where you can't blend it through. And I think if you, you know, even if you've got an air conditioning room, sometimes it can be quite clammy, can't it, on your skin. So that looks all soft, eyes are shaped. It's amazing, isn't it? Just doing those little tones to your face, taking the tones a few shades darker, it really brings out the features of your face. So I'm gonna go in, first of all, with my Rock and Coal Pencil Bedroom Black Charlotte Tilbury. And a nice soft pencil is what you need when you're doing this kind of look that doesn't scratch or irritate and deposits lots of black really, really quickly. And then I'm gonna go back on itself, lift up the lid and paint in between those lashes. And underneath. Now you might want to keep these pencils <laughs> if you have got quite a, a hot apartment in the fridge um, because I've put an eyeliner on once or twice before when I'm on holiday and it's just squidged literally in my eye. Anyone else had that? Melting makeup. I suppose because I've you know when I've often been on trips I'll take my my kit um, in a cool proof bag, cool box with an ice bag in because it separates and ruins the makeup so much. Right, I'm gonna keep it just like that, first of all. 
and then we'll go in, maybe we'll just use the same brush. I'll go in with the top coat straight over and I'm going to just do it from that area. So nice. And then smudge it with my finger, making sure I get it right next to the lashes and then underneath. So what I'll do is I'll use a little cotton bud to put these little particles, compact them into the cotton bud and that's better. And then push it along the line and make sure I wedge it in because my skin's quite loose there. So I need to make sure that I get that impact along the lash line. So lift up the lid and push it right in because if that doesn't have the pigment in, then it's not going to look strong enough. Just love cotton bud, so handy and helpful. Right, that's the outside, don't worry, that's not finished. Just in case you were worrying, and I know you're not. Going again with the other side, down the front, the eye. Oh, lovely effect. So I'll go in with a lighter colour on the inside. So push the product on, blend out with your finger. Blend out as far as you want. Actually, I can probably take that out a bit further, actually. When you're doing like a smoky eye like this, it's really important that you don't actually close your eye by making the dark all around your lashes, but not spreading it out. Right, place that on there. That's gone on actually nice and easily there. Right, and then the key thing is to get a nice clean brush and then blend really firmly into the skin so it's nice and soft. Good, now for the piece de la resistance. Going in with a nice light colour, I'm going to use my little finger. Oh, I love how that this actually, there's a few of them, like the, the hourglass ones like this were lovely, but they were so crumbly. And I wished, actually when I was on my run this morning, I was thinking of what I was gonna do. I thought, well, I'll just show them what I like to do when I'm you know, on holiday going out for dinner. I always find that process of actually getting ready for dinner on holiday quite nice. Um, have a shower and get ready. You just feel nice for the evening, don't you? It's always sort of quite rushed at home. I've literally just lost my train of thought. It will come back and I'm very sorry. <laughs> wittering on, wittering on. Anyway, yes, I wanted to show you what I did on holiday. Um, this, that's what I was trying to tell you is that I was thinking, gosh, I wish I could do it in the light because obviously this makeup is in um, 12, it's nearly midday, um, but I'd love to show you this makeup, you know, in a lovely balmy evening um, with a few candles on the table. Looks lovely. Now, just a little tip. Please never stop your makeup here. Please never think, oh, I don't need mascara because as you can see, it looks like my eyes have shrunk in size. Mascara is everything when you're doing a smoky eye and you still have to ensure that your mascara is at the forefront of your eyes. Now that might seem silly, but if your eyeshadow is rich and dark and you just put on a mascara that is very kind of light, the eyeshadow dominates and you can't see the lashes and your eyes look smaller. So Caution is my mascara of the evening, one of my favourite full-on lashes. One of my favourite full-on lashes. One of my favourite full-on mascaras. See, I need a break. Come back all new and improved. <laughs> but yeah. Do you get that? When you just literally go la 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 la, chatting away to yourself and then you can't remember where you were going. I'm sure you do. It's a thing, right? Especially at my age. Right, lovely lashes, top and bottom. Not as heavy on the bottom, don't need to as much. Prefer to have that lift and look at the difference. Um, I remember working with this lady in the studio and I used to look at her makeup and then after the week I said please can you just sit in my makeup chair I just want to show you something and I left one eye how she did it and she just used a very pale blue eyeliner and she was quite dark skin dark hair and I just took the eyeliner off uh, and put some on one eye and then put some mascara on and then put the liner on and the difference was amazing but she didn't understand it until she'd seen it on her own face um, it's always a good way of sort of showing people so if you're going into a store and you want to try something, maybe just get them to do the new product on the one side of your face so you can compare it to what you're used to. And then you can see the benefits a lot easier. 
and in the lovely soft light, because I shot with these, meaning I use them on a photo shoot of the day on an actress, and these just look so lovely. The light is very soft and natural in my office here, but um, if it hits a nice shiny light, it just looks really dewy and glossy. So that is my eye look. And I love that, and it stays put, and it just, that's just me. I'm very happy with that. So I will go in with my, and I'll keep my lips really, really simple actually, Probably just put a little bit of balm on, but I'll go in with the Anemone Rose Ink. That's another nice base actually for holidays because that's super lightweight. Where is that? I had that on my table a moment ago. A really nice skin tint, very much like the Chanel one that we talked about. So if you're looking for a tint, that's quite a nice one. I use shade 04. So that's just adding a little bit more of a sort of peachy watermelony hue to my cheeks as I've got enough brown with the uh, bronzer. So that just kind of gives a little bit more of a flush to the front of my face. Um, see now my eyes like darting around my face thinking, gosh, I really need to tidy up. Um, do you know what I've done? I'm so sorry. I feel really unprofessional now. I've put the blusher on with a dirty finger. So now I've got the eyeshadow all over my face. Now for those of you who Watch me on your TVs. Oh my goodness, that's so scary. <laughs> Seeing my face so big, I have, I, I, I should do it just to look. Um, but then I might, you know, silly, I shouldn't be like that, should I? I should be like, yay, brilliant. But we're all a little bit modest, aren't we? So I'm very sorry about that. I've just tidied that up. I just had a little bit of my cellular water on the uh, cotton bud and just took that off. As you can see, it was very light. I will just take a little bit of base because I want to make the, the final look nice <laughs> and just polish that up a little bit. So watch those grubby little mitts, right? And because I haven't used any powder, I can just blend that back into my complexion. So yeah, I could use the Monica Blunder. If you think that maybe you've done your eye makeup, but it's um, gone down a little bit, and you've actually made your eye droop a little bit because you've gone too far. Just a nice little kind of like a razoring effect is by putting the lighter concealer or lighter base just literally in the corner of your eye here, just to kind of create that lift. We'll just pull a, polish up that area. And then, like I said, because we haven't used powders, it all just sort of seamlessly kind of blends in together. Um, so yeah, I would probably just finish that is my look. Probably maybe take my hair down a little bit later after dinner, probably. I'll just tie it in like a little knot at the back of my head there so it just kind of doesn't get any more sort of damage throughout the, the day by putting more hair dryer on it. So I just put that in a little bun. Um, or I would put my red lip on. I'm tempted to put my red lip on as well just to show you the difference, but you've seen me with a red lip, haven't you? So for the lip, I'd either just put a little bit of lip balm on or got a bit of Lisa Eldridge's uh, Velvet Muse here which is really nice as a very soft lip shaper. Just apply with my finger. The reason I'm applying with my finger, not from the bullet, is because I don't want it to be really strong. I want it just to kind of flatter my lips without being overpowering and look like makeup. Well, that just helps kind of balance my lips a bit more and give me a little bit more of a top lip. So there we go. Um, so happy, happy holidays, everyone, if you are going away. If you're not going away, enjoy the sun here and make sure that you pop on some big earrings and go out for dinner um, and make the most of these lovely long days. Um, and thank you again so much for all the fun and support and comments. And um, I will be taking note of everything that you say and scrolling down and making little notes and come back in September with some lovely fresh content. It's always lovely what you want to learn about, whether it's more, do you want to learn about new products? I'm conscious not to bring new products to the table all the time just because you know, it's a lot of money. Beauty and makeup is costly. Um, so I try and mix it in with a little bit of education, new ways of using things or different products or just kind of anything that I feel is relevant. 
thank you again for being more support so supportive and um, I'll see you in September bye for now everyone <laughs>